Hey, I'm going to give you just a quick little tour of Stellarium, the desktop um, computer planetarium program that I'm asking you to use for the first couple labs. And when you first start up Stellarium after installing it, you will come up with a default view facing south. And um, now I've already set Greensboro to be um, my location, so you'll need to do that. So let me orient you a little bit. The two the main menus are in the lower left corner on the side and on the bottom. So let's start with the side here. If you click on location, you can uh, you can scroll down this list. I think Greensboro is in there. Um, and uh, let's see here. Well, go ahead and find it. Um, just make sure after you click it that your latitude and longitude actually change to about 36 degrees north for latitude and about 80 degrees west for longitude. And so that's your location. You can change your date and time to anything you would like with the next item here on the left. You have some sky and viewing options. And I'm going to pull this off to the side so you can see the screen, you can see the sky and what's happening as I change the view options. First off, over here, uh, I can just click and drag the sky just to pan around. I can also use the, uh, the up-down, left-right keys to, to pan left, right, and up and down. So either click, drag, or the arrow keys. The uh, options here include uh, showing planets, um, show planet markers. I like to have the names of the planets uh, as they go by. I can turn on and off the atmosphere here so that even though it is daytime, you can see the time here. It's a little bit after noon on June 3rd. My field of view is 60 degrees and it's a little bit after noon. Now, uh, so it is daytime. But by clicking that atmosphere button, I have turned off the atmosphere as if the Earth had no atmosphere and we can see this, the stars. The keys on the keyboard, J, K, and L control time. So if you look at the bottom, it's 1225, 16 seconds, 17 seconds. Time is advancing at its normal rate. And that'll that's the setting if you hit the K key. Um, but if... Um, uh, if I hit the L key, you can see that time, again, look at the bottom, you can see that time is advancing. Now it's advancing fast enough that we can see the stars move, and I'm hitting the L again, and yet again. And it's now nighttime, you can see that the ground is dark, um, and now it's daytime again, the sun is up. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull back a little bit. and maybe zoom out a little so you can actually see the sun in the sky. Hitting the K uh, returns time flowing to its normal rate of one second per second. If you use the J, you can actually run time backwards. Okay, back to these settings here. Um, Next tab is markings. We can turn on what's called the azimuthal grid, also known as ALTAZ. Azimuth is another word for compass direction, north, south, east, west. North is zero degrees, south is 180 degrees, etc. Um, the um, And altitude refers to angle above the horizon. So uh, for instance, this line in the sky is 10 degrees above the horizon. This is 20 degrees, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And the zenith is this point in the sky. We're looking straight up. Um, and that's called the zenith, or an altitude of 90 degrees. So that's the azimuthal grid. I'm going to turn that off. There's also called uh, something called the equatorial grid. The equatorial grid is kind of like latitude and longitude for the surface of the Earth, only it's for the celestial sphere. So the east-west dimension, kind of like longitude on the Earth, is called right ascension. And the north-south dimension or coordinate 
kind of like latitude on the earth is called declination. So this is the equatorial grid. I'm going to go ahead and advance time and I want you to notice that the equatorial grid is fixed to the celestial sphere. That is for a, a star, um, a star, its coordinates are fixed just like the latitude and longitude of a city on the earth are fixed. Uh, so uh, for example, Sirius, which is the brightest star in the nighttime sky, its right ascension and declination are, looks to me like six hours and 45 minutes or so, and negative 17 degrees declination, something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on off the equatorial grid and here's the azimuthal grid. The azimuthal grid, unlike the equatorial grid, is fixed to the ground. And so the stars are moving through the azimuthal grid, the altitude and azimuth, the, the height above the horizon, and the direction of stars changes constantly as, it ri as they rise and set. There are a couple other markings you can turn on. Uh, this is the celestial equator. The line in the sky directly above the Earth's equator. Here's the meridian. It is the line in the sky that runs north-south through your zenith. It divides your sky, your view, into an eastern half of the sky and a western half of the sky. Here's the ecliptic. The ecliptic is the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. It's also the plane of the other planets' orbits around the Sun. Uh, more or less, plus or minus a couple degrees. So you will always find the planets and the sun, of course, somewhere near the ecliptic. So there's Jupiter, here's Vesta, a dwarf planet, Saturn, Mars. Notice that the ecliptic is above the celestial equator half in half of the sky. It's below the celestial equator in the other half. So the ecliptic does this wobble, whereas the celestial equator uh, is rock solid. It doesn't, it doesn't wobble because it's perpendicular to the axis of the Earth. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn those off. The, um, here you can turn on uh, the lines connecting the dots in the constellations and the labels um, and the boundaries for the constellations. So now if we look at, say, the constellation of, uh, here's, here's the constellation of Gemini. Oops. And I'm afraid it's not showing very well here, at least on my screen. Uh, but there are faint lines connecting these stars in the constellation of Gemini. By the way, if you click on an object and you hit the space bar, it centers it. And as you advance time, that object will stay centered. Oops, I went a little extreme there with the time flow. But here we're following Venus as it rises and sets. So click on it and hit the space bar to do that. Okay, the, um, let me just show you a few other things here. You can search, like if you uh, wanna look for the moon, click on that and it will uh, find the moon for you. We can zoom in. You can see it's new moon because we're pretty darn close to the sun. And uh, now if we advance time, we'll actually, we can follow the moon and see its phases changing. changing. But doing that with the JKL buttons, the moon's gonna be rising, setting, it's gonna be very chaotic. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit the equal sign. And the equal sign jumps forward one day, 24 hours, so right now it is about 10.43 in the morning and we're following the moon. Oh, now it's a waxing crescent, waxing crescent. And oh, the ground is in the way. I can hit the G and make the earth transparent. We're still in Greensboro. We're still, the sky is still behaving, but it's as if the earth is transparent. And I'm hitting the equal key again and we can follow the moon um, through its phases. And here we are 
back at new moon again close to the sun. Okay, so waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full, waning gibbous, third quarter, waning crescent, and back to new, near the sun. Okay, so that is uh, the equal key. That's important. By the way, if... Um, oh, I'm going to turn... I'm going to hit G again to turn the ground back on. I was zoomed way out. And here we are. We're looking east. And I just want to show you something. As I hit the equal sign, notice 24 hours later... It's 10.44 in the morning, almost 10.45. 10.45, 10.45, 10.45. But the sky is in a slightly different place every day at the same time. And so you can see the sun is moving against the background stars. The sky is moving relative to us. That's because a solar day, 24 hours, is actually a 361 degree spin of the Earth. You're not seeing... The stars rise and set, but they're going around as 361 degrees, so that at 1044 and 51 seconds the following morning, the, the sky has shifted one degree towards the west. Now, if I hit, instead of the equal sign, if I hit alt equals, notice at the bottom it's not 1044, it's 1040, almost 1041, 1036, almost 1037. 10.33, 10.29. So by doing alt equals, we're jumping forward one sidereal day, 23 hours, 56 minutes. And that's the time it takes the Earth to spin 360 degrees exactly. And so the stars don't appear to move, but you can see the actual motion of the sun, and Mercury is also in there. As uh, And here comes the moon. Um, as those things move against the background stars. So that is a quick, quick tour of Stellarium, and uh, you'll get more experience. Uh, do be sure to download the, uh, the little crib sheet that I made for you that is available, um, as well as the lab. Um, the crib sheet will be useful as a, as a reference.